From the Samsung Production Studios in the heart of Hazleton, Pennsylvania, it's your News 13. Brought to you by SSP TV and the Standard Speaker. Are they good neighbors trying to protect the community, or are they people with guns trying to take the law into their own hands? Hazleton Council's reaction to a crime watch with guns, our top story on News 13 for this Friday. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Kathy Bazinski. A Hazleton businessman wants to put public safety in the hands of a citizen's patrol with a difference. He asked City Council to support a new crime watch that would be armed. As Matthew Petrillo reports, City Council is taking a hands-off approach. Forget about the days when your friendly neighborhood crime watch were reflective vests and carried flashlights. This man, Mark Rabo of First Street, wants them packing heat and trained to fire. And I just don't feel comfortable that any member of the watch room would be sitting ducks. Rabo doesn't want to put local police out of a job. He says he just wants to feel safe. At least two council people support the idea, including Councilman Jack Mundy. The idea passed around council for more than a half hour, but there was no vote. That's because the group can legally form, but whether the group should form was a different question. I don't see any good that can come of it at all. Who can imagine such a thing? When each neighborhood having its own, its own armed guards and uh, patrolling its neighborhoods and, uh, and uh, what good can come of that? Someone's going to get hurt. Hazleton Mayor Yanuzi called the idea unnecessary. He's allowed to carry a gun. If he carries a gun and he joins a crime watch, there's still nothing I can do. It's just that we won't uh, endorse it, nor will we train or encourage it. So we're just staying away from that. Rabo plans to get a gun permit Monday and bring the issue up to the district attorney at a town hall meeting scheduled for the same day. Matthew Petrillo, News 13, Hazleton. A Hazleton man is in jail after the Attorney General's office charged him with nine felony counts of viewing and downloading child porn. 62-year-old Pedro Lozano Gomez is charged with child pornography and disseminating video of child sex acts. Arrest warrants say the AG's office was investigating online exploitation of children and found four videos depicting children in sexual acts linked to Lozano Gomez's home computer. When agents went to his home, they found a number of videos stored there. In his arraignment before District Judge Joe Zola, he said he was only viewing them. Lozano Gomez couldn't make $250,000 and is in prison tonight. A Hazleton man is now charged with cruelty to animals after the choking death of a dog last weekend. 53-year-old Gino Salo Sr. told police he was walking his nephew's pit bull mix when it jumped into a yard on Harwood Road and then pulled on the dog's leash for 20 minutes trying to get it to come out. He said the dog's eyes started popping out and then the dog stopped moving and that he got scared and ran away. However, the dog was discovered in a dumpster with its leash still attached. He later told his nephew the dog ran away. State police say Salo intentionally, willfully and maliciously killed and tortured the dog. He's facing a preliminary hearing on May 8th. It's a troubling dilemma that got national attention. An elderly woman in a California senior living center died after a nurse refused to revive her with CPR. So how would senior citizens centers in our area deal with this emergency? And what's Pennsylvania's law on the decision? Christina Papa visited Fritzingertown Senior Living to get some answers. An 87-year-old woman died in a California senior living center earlier this week after a nurse refused to administer CPR. Is there a gardener or any staff, anybody that doesn't work for you anywhere? Can we flag someone down in the street and get them to help this lady? If I understand if your boss is telling you you can't do it. Yeah. But if there's any, uh, as a human being, I don't, you know, is there anybody that's, where, yeah. that's willing to help this lady and not let her die? Um, not at this time. Paula Hahn is the administrator at Fritzinger Town. She says there's a difference between do not resuscitate and do not help. Somebody can have a living will and somebody can have what is called a do not resuscitate order, but that certainly doesn't mean do not treat. Paula says the nurses do all they can to care for the residents at Fritzinger Town until the very last moment of the patient's life. These residents here become our extended family um, and we, you know, we do grow to love our residents. It is very difficult to watch somebody pass on. You have to put your feelings aside and respect the fact that you know, the resident has made a decision. Linda says her main job is to care, and she and the staff are prepared in case of an emergency. 
And although many seniors here are still very active, over half would choose not to be resuscitated if put in an emergency situation. I would probably say 30% of our residents choose to have CPR. The rest choose not. Linda wants to make it clear that the decision to not resuscitate is something Fritzinger Town takes very seriously. So does it mean that if someone's having a stomach ache or if there's any other problem that a resident might be having, um, it doesn't mean do not care. Christina Papa, News 13, Drums. And still ahead on News 13, who's got spring fever? Well, everybody will once we get into this weekend. We'll have the balmy temperatures in News 13 weather. But first, everybody's tightening their belts these days. But how can you be a fashionista on a tight budget? We'll tell you when News 13 continues. Most people are still struggling back from tough economic times, but there are still ways to stay in fashion while keeping within your budget. As Stephanie Gorney found out, there's a new local business where you may be able to find clothes at an affordable price and maybe even make some money selling things you don't want. Many are struggling to keep up with just the basic necessities due to the drop in the economy that occurred just a few years ago. Families are living off a budget that does not allow for purchases of clothing or accessories. But one local store that recently opened is looking to change all of that. It's very hard um, today with people's budget, the economy, people are losing their jobs. They still have to clothe themselves um, so they can come here and get um, beautiful work clothes. If, if they do still work, they can get work clothes at discounted prices. You know, it's very reasonable. Danielle's Consignment Boutique opened just three weeks ago, and the staff has already noticed that they are developing loyal customers. I think it's because of the quality of clothing that we do offer, um, very in style, very popular clothing and shoes and purses, um, which purses are actually have been the most successful, the designer um, purses. Here at Danielle's Consignment Boutique, it's your one-stop shop for all your clothing needs, from windbreakers to sports apparel for the sports fans in your life, to dressy clothes for your children, and even brand new prom dresses. We have brand new gowns that are from a bridal salon that closed. We have the tiaras, we have veils here, we have jewelry. Um, but you can get them up to 70% off, and they're never worn. The boutique asks that if you bring in clothing to sell, that the items are washed, ironed, and put on a hanger to be put out on the shelf. The seller will get up to 40% of the price that the clothing sells for. Stephanie Gorney, News 13, Hazleton. Well, high school students from all over the area came to Hazleton today to learn about different options that they have when deciding on a new career. Just push it all the way on, okay. Okay, now hold the tourniquet, the tap, leave that go. Tap, just pull straight up. Over 200 students came to McCann School of Business in Hazleton to participate in the McCann Madness Games. The goal was to educate students on different programs that are available at the school and what career options are open to them. There were several interactive stations set up where the students could actually engage in different activities to see what interests them to inform high school students about different career choices that are out there for them in a very fun, competitive way. We have 10 high schools here representing 210 students from throughout the area. Uh, the students are learning about allied health, criminal justice, massage, our trades, uh, as well as paramedic. And students were also asked several trivia questions at each station, and the school that gave the most correct answers went home with a trophy. And it's time now for our regional weather from the National Weather Service checking the radar. The rainy, snowy mix we had during the overnight on the way out of here. And nothing but clear skies and warmer temperatures on the way for the weekend. Our creative condition tonight is just made for a terrific weekend. It's by Jared Santana, a second grader at West Hazleton Elementary Middle School. And he drew a nice sunny day and he and his friends are playing in the playground. And they just might get to do that this weekend. One reminder quickly though, daylight savings time this Sunday, 2 a.m. We spring ahead, so push your clocks ahead one hour. Now let's take a look at News 13 weather from the National Weather Service for Greater Hazleton. Tonight partly cloudy with a low around 22 degrees and Saturday it's a beauty sunny with a high near 49 nighttime low only down to 31 degrees. Moving over to Schuylkill County tonight mostly cloudy then gradually becoming mostly clear with a low down to 23 but for Saturday check this out sunny with a high near 53 degrees overnight low down to 29. It's going to be a beauty. Well, this Sunday, Booty Beltrami and his staff at Booty's Place will reach out to the community to help a six-year-old boy from Freeland to raise funds to help him fight an overwhelming number of medical conditions. 
Danielle Smith has nothing but hugs for Booties manager Yazwe Bengali when they meet to plan Sunday's fundraiser for six-year-old Caleb. The Freeland boy has always struggled with autism disorders, but just recently received a new diagnosis. He was diagnosed with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Uh, it's the kid's form of Lou Gehrig's disease. He's having trouble walking. Uh, playing is hard for him. Uh, by the age of 12, he'll be completely incapacitated and in a wheelchair. Booty's owner, Louis Beltrami, heard of the little one's plight and was touched. He was very touched personally, and he wanted to just reach out and help out whatever we could do and raise funds. So from 10 till 2 this Sunday, everybody's invited to fill the tables at Booty's place to help support Caleb's medical treatments. There's no charge. Folks are just invited to have some delicious Italian food and donate whatever they can. We have a famous sausage and peppers, we have chicken marsala, we have baked ziti, and we have plenty of food. Just come on in, enjoy dinner with us, and if you can, drop us $5, $10, $50, or even more so that we can help Caleb to get a surgery. Caleb's mom can't estimate her son's medical costs in the future, but she knows he'll fight every step of the way and appreciates the financial backup. He's such a strong kid, though. I mean, he fights with everything he has to beat it, mm -hmm. but there's no cure. There's really no treatment. It's just, it's something that happens. And once again, the fundraiser for six-year-old Caleb Smith. It's this Sunday, March 10th at Booty's Place in the Churchill Mall from 10 a.m. till 2. No cent donation, just have some dinner and donate what you can. And let's check the winning midday lottery numbers. Good luck if you play. The daily number, two, four, three. The big four, three, 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 two. Quinto, one, 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 five, three. And the treasure hunt, two, seven, eight, 12, 18. Hope you won. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's social news. First tonight, happy birthday to Vicki Harris. This wish comes with love from your family and friends. Tonight's Talk of the Town report, the Greater Hazleton Health Alliance will be hosting a registered nurse career fair Sunday, March 10th from 2 to 5 p.m. and again Wednesday, March 13th from 5 to 8 p.m. The fair will be held in the main lobby of the Hazleton General Hospital. Full-time, part-time, and other shifts are available. For more info, please call 570-501-6290. There will be a hoagie sale to benefit a cancer patient that is in dire need of help on March 9th. Please call 570-788-5486 to order, and any help is appreciated. And finally, the Tamako Community Arts Center is hosting an evening of Irish song and dance Saturday, March 9th from 7 to 9.30 p.m. Tickets are just $5 at the door. For more information, please call 570-668-1192 at Snipes Talk of the Town. And plenty more news and information headed your way on News 13. That controversial decision not to resuscitate a nursing home resident making waves across the country. How does the law work in Pennsylvania? That story and much more news when the 13 crew comes right back. An elderly relative in nursing care signs that do not resuscitate waiver in case the worst happens. But how do nursing homes deal with it when the worst comes? That's our top story on News 13 at 430. From the Samsung Production Studios in the heart of Hazleton, Pennsylvania, it's your News 13. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Kathy Bozinski. It's a troubling dilemma that got national attention. An elderly woman in a California senior living center died when a nurse refused to revive her with CPR. So how would senior centers in our area deal with this emergency and what's Pennsylvania's law on the decision? Christina Papa visited Fritz Inkertown Senior Living to get the answers. An 87-year-old woman died in a California senior living center earlier this week after a nurse refused to administer CPR. Is there a gardener or any staff, anybody that doesn't work for you anywhere? Can we flag someone down in the street and get them to help this lady? If I understand if your boss is telling you you can't do it. Yeah. But if there's any, uh, as a human being, I don't, you know, is there anybody that's, where, yeah. that's willing to help this lady and not let her die? Um, not at this time. Paula Hahn is the administrator at Fritzinger Town. She says there's a difference between do not resuscitate and do not help. Somebody can have a living will and somebody can have what is called a do not resuscitate order, but that certainly doesn't mean do not treat. Paula says the nurses do all they can to care for the residents at Fritzinger Town until the very last moment of the patient's life. These residents here become our extended family. 
Um, and we, you know, we do grow to love our residents. It is very difficult to watch somebody pass on. You have to put your feelings aside and respect the fact that, you know, the resident has made a decision. Linda says her main job is to care and she and the staff are prepared in case of an emergency. And although many seniors here are still very active, over half would choose not to be resuscitated if put in an emergency situation. I would probably say 30% of our residents choose to have CPR. The rest choose not. Linda wants to make it clear that the decision to not resuscitate is something Fritzinger Town takes very seriously. So does it mean that if someone's having a stomach ache or if there's any other problem that a resident might be having, um, it doesn't mean do not care. Christina Papa, News 13, Drums. A Hazleton man is in jail after the Attorney General's office charged him with nine felony counts of viewing and downloading child porn. 62-year-old Pedro Lozano Gomez is charged with child pornography and disseminating video of child sex acts. Arrest warrants say the AG's office was investigating online exploitation of children and found four videos depicting children in sexual acts linked to Lozano Gomez's home computer. When agents went to his home, they found a number of videos stored there. In his arraignment before District Judge Joe Zola, he said he was only viewing those videos. Lozano Gomez could make $250,000 bail and is in prison tonight. A Hazleton man is now charged with cruelty to animals in the choking death of a dog last weekend. 53-year-old Gino Salo Sr. told police he was walking his nephew's pit bull mix when it jumped into a yard on Harwood Road and that he pulled on the dog's leash for 20 minutes trying to get it to come out. He said the dog's eyes started popping and then the dog stopped moving and that he got scared and ran away. However, the dog was discovered in a dumpster with its leash still attached. He later told his nephew the dog ran away. State police say Salo and intentionally, willfully, and maliciously killed and tortured the dog. He's facing a preliminary hearing on May 8th. Well, a Hazleton businessman wants to put public safety in the hands of a citizen's patrol with a difference. He asked City Council to support a new crime watch that would be armed. As Matthew Petrillo reports, City Council is taking a hands-off approach. Forget about the days when your friendly neighborhood crime watch were reflective vests and carried flashlights. This man, Mark Rabo of First Street, wants them packing heat and trained to fire. And I just don't feel comfortable that any member of a watchman would be sitting ducks. Rabo doesn't want to put local police out of a job. He says he just wants to feel safe. At least two council people support the idea, including Councilman Jack Mundy. I don't know about the rest of the council, but I think it's something we should pursue. The idea passed around council for more than a half hour, but there was no vote. That's because the group can legally form, but whether the group should form was a different question. I don't see any good that can come of it at all. Who can imagine such a thing? When each neighborhood having its own, its own armed guards and uh, patrolling its neighborhoods and, uh, and uh, what good can come of that? Someone's gonna get hurt. Hazleton Mayor Yanuzi called the idea unnecessary. He's allowed to carry a gun. If he carries a gun and he joins a crime watch, there's still nothing I can do. It's just that we won't uh, endorse it, nor will we train or encourage it. So we're just staying away from that. Rabo plans to get a gun permit Monday and bring the issue up to the district attorney at a town hall meeting scheduled for the same day. Matthew Petrillo, News 13, Hazleton. And coming up on News 13, we'll sound the spring fever alert, how high temperatures will get this weekend in News 13 weather. But first, how do you become the height of spring fashion on a budget that's low? We'll have some options for you when News 13 comes right back. Most people are still struggling back from tough economic times, but there are still ways to stay in fashion while keeping within your budget. As Stephanie Gorney found out, there's a new local business where you may be able to find clothes at an affordable price and maybe even make some money selling items you don't want. Many are struggling to keep up with just the basic necessities due to the drop in the economy that occurred just a few years ago. Families are living off a budget that does not allow for purchases of clothing or accessories. But one local store that recently opened is looking to change all of that. It's very hard um, today with people's budget, the economy, people are losing their jobs. They still have to clothe themselves um, so they can come here and get um, beautiful work clothes. If, if they do still work, they can get work clothes at discounted prices. You know, it's very reasonable. 
Danielle's Consignment Boutique opened just three weeks ago, and the staff has already noticed that they are developing loyal customers. I think it's because of the quality of clothing that we do offer, um, very in style, very popular clothing and shoes and purses, um, which purses are actually have been the most successful, the designer um, purses. Here at Danielle's Consignment Boutique, it's your one-stop shop for all your clothing needs, from windbreakers to sports apparel for the sports fans in your life, to dressy clothes for your children, and even brand new prom dresses. We have brand new gowns that are from a bridal salon that closed. We have the tiaras, we have veils here, we have jewelry, um, but you can get them up to 70% off, and they're never worn. The boutique asks that if you bring in clothing to sell, that the items are washed, ironed, and put on a hanger to be put out on the shelf. The seller will get up to 40% of the price that the clothing sells for. Stephanie Gorney, News 13, Hazleton. And time now for our regional weather from the National Weather Service. Checking the radar, rainy, snowy mix we had overnight. On the way out of here, nothing but clear skies, warmer temperatures on the way for the weekend. Our creative condition tonight makes for a nice weekend. It's by Jared Santana, second grader at West Hazleton Elementary Middle School. He drew a nice sunny day. He and his friends are playing in the playground, and they just might get to do that this weekend. And a reminder, too, it's daylight savings time, 2 a.m. Sunday morning. Spring ahead, so push your clocks ahead one hour. Now let's take a look at News 13 weather from the National Weather Service for Greater Hazleton. Tonight it'll be partly cloudy with a low down to 22 degrees. Then here we go. Saturday, sunny with a high near 49, nighttime low down to 31. Sunday, mostly sunny with a high near 49 again. Slight chance of showers overnight, but a low of 34. And Monday, cloudy a chance of showers high up to 51 degrees. Showers at night, low down to 35. And for Tuesday, cloudy with a chance of rain and snow showers, high still near 46 degrees. On Escuco County tonight, most Mostly cloudy, then gradually becoming mostly clear with a low down to 23. Saturday, it's a beauty, sunny with a high near 53, overlight, overnight low of 29. Sunday, beautiful again, mostly sunny with a high near 50, nighttime low down to 36. Monday, cloudy with a chance of rain, high up to 54 degrees, but we're way above freezing on our lows. Showers at night with a low down to 40. But then Tuesday, cloudy with a chance of showers, high still near 49 degrees. Well, high school students from all over the area came to Hazleton today to learn about different options that they have when deciding their career choice. Just push it all the way on. Okay. okay. Now, pull the tourniquet, the tap, leave that go. Wow. Over 200 students came to McCann School of Business in Hazleton to participate in the McCann Madness Games. The goal was to educate students on different programs that are available at the school and the career options that are open to them. There were several interactive stations set up where the students could engage in different activities to see what interests them. To inform high school students about different career choices that are out there for them in a very fun, competitive way. We have 10 high schools here representing 210 students from throughout the area. Uh, the students are learning about allied health, criminal justice, massage, our trades, uh, as well as paramedic. And students were also asked several trivia questions at each of those stations, and the school that gave the most correct answers went home with a trophy. And still ahead on News 13, it's March Madness, not just in the NCAA, but also in the PIAA. Fred Barletta with the brackets in News 13 Sports. And then it's time for our weekly dose of cute for a good cause. Start the spring with a new puppy or kitten, and we'll tell you how coming up on News 13. SSP TV Sports on News 13 with Fred Barletta Jr. and Ron Marchetti. If you're a high school basketball junkie, welcome to your time of year. The PIAA playoffs start this weekend. Tonight, as a matter of fact, for four of the uh, eight divisions in the state. So let's get to it, show you the brackets, and start answering questions. How good are teams like Allentown Central Catholic, Abington Heights, GAR, Scranton Prep? They're the regional teams that are uh, going to get right out of the gate tonight because it's AAA boys. You take a look, top half of the brackets, Newman Goretti, the number one team out of the city of Philadelphia in AAA, they got Bishop McDevitt now. There you go, Scranton Prep out of District 2 gets Milton. Now Milton is the District 4 champs, but uh, I kind of think Scranton Prep's got the upper hand tonight. I uh, am going to pick Scranton Prep in that one. Now, very interesting game here, GAR and Donegal. This is not a good draw for GAR. They're the number two team out of District 2, and Donegal, if you look at their seed, 
is the three team out of District 3. They got upended in the uh, semifinals. They have only one loss all year. They're 23 and one, and they're not gonna be a happy bunch of campers coming off that loss. So GAR will have their hands full tonight. The only advantage, they uh, could probably pedal their bicycle to the game. It's down at Holy Redeemer High School. Remember, the higher seed gets quote unquote a home game, not on your home floor, but uh, in the neighborhood, so to speak. Here's one of the teams you gotta look throughout the entire tournament. The Vikings of Allentown Central Catholic, they're playing Northeastern and Abington Heights. The District 2 champ has Shikalami. Uh, I like the Comets to roll through the first round there. And then they'll wait and see, they'll play either Palmyra or Philadelphia Electric. There is the rest of the bracket. Now, single A boys, let's quickly go through the brackets there. Lebanon Catholic and uh, Old Forge in the bottom half of that particular one. They'll be playing Pius the 10th. Where you want to really go down as you switch through and see some of the other matchups right there. Now, here we go. Look at this bracket. Monoy and Muncie. They're squaring off at Marts Hall, 7 o'clock. The Golden Bears come in 21 and 5, District 11 champs in single A. They'll get the winner of the New Hope Academy School at Church Farm. So uh, there you go. Church, school, and farm. That's a heck of a trifecta. Anyhow, Greenwood, always one of the powers in the single-A tournament. They're in that uh, little lower half of the bracket, down to uh, Delco Christian. Hey, girls get underway tonight, too, quad-A style. And you take a look, right at the top of the bracket is Springford. They were having a great year. They were not in the Hazleton tournament for the first time in a long time. Parkland is District 11 number three seed, the District 11 champ. Nazareth is taking on Pensbury. And as you go down the line, you could take a look and you will find the uh, District 3 champ, Wilson, in that bottom half of the bracket. We pointed out one of their two losses was to Hazel up at Hazleton this year. They've got uh, Garnett Valley. Pocono Mountain West has North Penn. And finally, let's take a look at the single A brackets as the state tournament lines up. Newman Garetti. Look at that record. They're 13 and 11, barely over 500. They're the District 12 champs. Do not take them lightly. Notre Dame of Green Pond, the champs of District 11, get Southern Columbia. You got St. Basil Academy is the District 1 champ. York Catholic, they're going to be playing Parkway. The District 2 champ is Dunmore. They draw Muncie. Pine Grove gets uh, the Emin Hotop Charter School and Wilkes-Barre GAR, Mount Carmel area. It's going to be an exciting weekend. Opening round, the state tournament. Oh, we're going to just reverse it, boys and girls, and those classifications get underway on Saturday. American Hockey League, the Pens, back in action tonight. They're on the road. They skate at Providence in college basketball. The PSAC semifinals, and the Bloomsburg Lady Huskies are in the mix. They will play Edinburgh tonight on their home court. Edinburgh, out of the west, and... Uh, Again, this is the semifinals. Punch your ticket, play for the PSAC championship. Have yourself a good weekend, folks. End of the week, and uh, well, you know what that means. You gotta head up to Bottlenecks. It's the all night happy hour. They got half price apps and drink specials from open to close, and that includes the huge imported beer selection, pool dart shuffleboard, kitchen open until midnight, and they got those 14 flat screen TVs. Get up and you're going to watch the games tonight up at Bottlenecks. They sponsor us right here on SSP TV. If you want to go out, then you want to go to Bottlenecks, the place everyone is talking about. You want to go where the food is as good as the atmosphere, where you can find mouth-watering steaks, amazing appetizers, seafood, burgers, wraps, and of course, you want to go for the award-winning wings. Bottlenecks is the perfect place to meet with friends for lunch, dinner, or drinks after work. So if you want to go where everyone is having a good time, you want to go to Bottlenecks. This is Short Shots, Friday, March 8th. Hi, everybody. The first week of March is over, and so are the District 2-4 Class 3A Sub-Regional Swimming Championships that were held at the Scranton CYC. The Hazel Area High School swimmers recorded record-breaking performances. Cougar senior Ryan Paisley set a new district and school record in the 100 backstroke 
while also anchoring the Cougars 400 freestyle relay team and also while passing the 2,000 point milestone for his outstanding career. Only one other boy and two girls ever scored 2,000 points in their careers at Hazel area. So that's pretty darn amazing. Congratulations to Ryan Paisley and also to Alex Podlesny, a junior who captured the gold and the school record in the 500 freestyle, helping the Lady Cougars win their second consecutive team championship. Podlesny also passed the 1,000 point career mark. Paisley and Podlesny, along with a squad of Cougar swimmers, are headed to the States later this month. What else? The Notre Dame women, led by Skyler Diggins, beat UConn in three OTs at South Bend, while in Waco, Texas, Brittany Griner scored a Big 12 single game record 50 points in her final regular season game at Baylor. The Lady Bears behind her 6'10 center, who were national champions last year at 40-0, are 29-1 this season, and so are the ND girls. While for the men in the NCAA, Gonzaga moved into number one in the AP Top 25 for the first time in its program's history. In the NBA, the Miami Heat are on a 16-game win streak, and even more amazing is the Chicago Blackhawks in the National Hockey League. They're, the Blackhawks are 21-0 with three ties. That's more than amazing, like mother of God, that's incredible. That's 24 games that they scored a point without a loss. The all-time record is 35, recorded by the 1979-80 Philadelphia Flyers. And finally, Fox TV announced this week that they will unveil a new Fox Sports Network that will debut in August. A 24-hour sports cable network called Fox Sports One that will challenge ESPN. Wow. I'm not sure about that, but I'm, I'm sure about this. I'm done for tonight. See you Monday. Till then, stay loose. <laughs>here at the Hazleton Animal Shelter for this week's Adopt Me and today we have a dog who is a lot calmer than his breed normally is. Yes, uh, we have a miniature poodle here, uh, no name for him as of yet. Uh, the adopters could take care of that, whoever they would be. And um, he's not your typical yippy sort of uh, hyper poodle. He's actually very laid back and calm. Uh, he's very affectionate, a little bit hand shy at first, but very, very affectionate once he gets to know you. Uh, he has been tested for heartworm and Lyme and is negative for both. He's already neutered and current on his vaccinations, and he's probably not more than a two or maybe three years old. Yeah, he's very calm. He just even the people who were passing in and out of the shelter, he wasn't even barking at her. He didn't. He doesn't seem very territorial. Correct. He's not. Uh, <clears throat> he's not quick to start barking at the public. He's pretty accepting of basically everybody who walks by him. He's not defensive of uh, the property or of us. Um, and he is unusually quiet for a dog his size and breed. And there's this week's featured dog. Now let's head on into the cat colony. And now we're here in the cat colony with Kaja, who is a unique cat. That's right. Kaja has blue eyes and very few cats that are not um, of a particular type of breed have blue eyes. In other words, she's not a Siamese or a Himalayan, Persian, or anything like, like that. She's just a regular domestic short hair, black and white as you can see, and she has these beautiful blue eyes. We have no idea where she got them. Uh, Katya also has a, a very unique personality. She's very well-mannered and sweet. Um, she was initially very timid when she first came in. She had a habit of hiding under her blanket constantly. But within a week or so of being down here, she warmed up to staff and uh, she no longer hides from anybody. She looks forward to being held and loved and uh, looks very forward to going to a new home. Of course, she is spayed, negative for both feline leukemia and FIV, and uh, current on all her vaccinations. And you see, she just wants to be held and loved. She'd probably be great for any home. And because she is so cautious, it may be better for her to go to a home just with her being the center of attention and no other cat. Yeah, she's not bad with other cats. Um, she doesn't show any aggression toward them, but I'm sure she would love to be the center of attention. Okay, and there's Kaja. Now, if you guys at home have any questions, uh, stop down at the Hazleton Animal Shelter at 101 North Poplar Street. And for this week's Adopt Me, I'm Stephanie Gorney. And that's News 13 for your Friday. Thank you so much for joining us. You can catch this newscast again with rebroadcast throughout tonight or just go to News 13's website anytime, sspTV.com, where you'll always find the local and regional news you need and the community news you want. For the entire News 13 team, thank you so much for joining us. I'm Kathy Bazinski. Have a great weekend.